aviation's final frontier. <laughs> Cowboy pilots who deliver small, used aircraft. Why is this thing not working? Freaking A, man. Across distances they were never meant to fly. The most extreme type of flying you can do. Slow down. Every plane I fly in, I expect is trying to kill me. It's not a job for everyone. Heading home. But there's always someone daring enough to take it on. Dude, my stomach's turning a little bit. Come on with that. And live to fly another day. This has been a delivery from hell. Minimums, minimums. Too low, terrain. This is my last stop. I'm done. Carrie McCauley is where no ferry flyer wants to be, grounded in Brazil. With the clock ticking, waiting on his co-pilot. I'm going to be meeting Corey for the first time this morning. It's supposed to be down here at 5.30 so we can get a good and early start. But so far, no Corey. Carrie's flown almost two-thirds of this trip with another pilot. I would like to ditch in front of a cruise ship because we'd be in the hot tub with a margarita within the hour. Or do I shut off the gas? <laughs> but that pilot had to bail because of a schedule conflict. I'm done. This is the end of the line. And for Carrie, the only thing worse is finding out the replacement is a guy he's never even met, his boss. You're going to come all the way down here to take my spot? I've done tons of trips like these all by myself. And far more dangerous, far more difficult. To have someone come down here to help me it just drives me nuts. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Speak all right. How are we doing? Pretty good, pretty good. As company owner, nice Corey one. Benson's priority is keeping customers on side by delivering on time. And Carrie's already one step ahead. The airport closes at 8, from 8 to noon. We're either out here by 8, and we're staying. Let's go around here on that side. This flight is Corey's chance to crack Brazil, one of the fastest growing small plane markets in the world. I know Kerry wanted to do this by himself, but the first flight into a new country is so important for us. If they're happy, they may tell a couple people. If they're pissed off, they're going to tell the world. And Corey's client expects the plane at his Brazilian ranch in less than 48 hours. I'm going to go check weather and file a flight plan. If you want to get her untied, um, either go in the office right there or talk to the guy with the truck. Carrie and Corey are still finding their feet as a team, and it's costing them precious time. Oh, we got to pay the landing fees, too, so yeah. A scheduled airport closure leaves them less than an hour to get off the ground. If we don't get out of here by 8 o'clock, we're stuck till probably tomorrow, because by noon, we won't have enough time to finish the legs we need to get done today. Today's plan is ambitious. Log more than 1,800 kilometers over dense Brazilian jungle, where landing strips are scarce if it all goes bad. All right, we're all set. How it's looking? a 10-hour day good? that yeah. puts them down yeah. just before sunset, all pre -flat. but I only find if their wheels up within minutes. Oh. We got 30 minutes to get off the ground. All right, let's get this moving. The plane they're delivering is a Beechcraft Bonanza. Carrie's brought it almost 5,000 kilometers with no mechanical problems. Ah, uh, no. Until now. We do not have time to dink around with this. What the hell? We got no power for the plane. Well, if we can't get this started in a couple of minutes, then it means we're staying here for a while. Do you want me to go see if the fuel truck has a jumper? Corey and Carrie now have 15 minutes before the runway closes. No time to install a new battery. Why would I have totally dead there? There he is. We need to get jumped and get out of here. Can you jump us? We're having a really difficult time communicating. I'm not sure if they know what we need, but we have less than 10 minutes to get the airplane jumped and off the ground. He has no idea what I'm trying to say. Battery dead. We need to plug in. Yeah, you got that? Dang. 
We gotta hurry though. They're <laughs> closing the runway. Time we got. We really do only have a few minutes. Emergency troubleshooting goes with the territory. But it's easier if you know the guy you're in deep with. Come on. Corey's usual go-to guy is a veteran pilot, Randy McGee. That light means we have 10 minutes left of fuel. Holy Together, Corey and Randy have been through hell. What was that? And high water. Right now, Randy's on another mission in Canada's far north. He's here trying out for the ferry flight of a lifetime. Dave? Sir. Hey, Randy McGee. Randy, nice to finally meet you. Nice man. to meet you, How's too. The United Nations needs this plane in Africa to help save lives in South Sudan, the world's newest country. And the twin engine Dornier is perfect for the job. It carries twice the cargo of other turboprops and can nail a short runway, paved or not. Ideal for the rough and tumble world of UN relief missions. We can land this thing fully loaded in 500 feet, so you can get her stopped pretty quick. Wow. If you come in slow. That's impressive. Randy's at the bottom of a steep learning curve. I haven't seen anything like that. He's never flown a Dornier, and he's got just two days to learn. And even though he's racked up an impressive 10,000 plus hours of flying time, the Dornier will force him to up his game. When I learned he was an airline pilot, I had concerns. Randy flies a 767, I mean, that's a big jet. But if you even talk to Randy, how much does he actually fly the aircraft? Well, not really. You push a button, and it sort of does its magic, right? To jump into something like this now, where you're actually hands and feet back to old school, what he used to do, if you haven't done it for a long time, anyone's gonna get rusty. Aircraft flight manual here. They're standing operating procedures. The uh, company operations manual is there. Looks pretty bad, man. <laughs> it is a lot of info. <laughs> That's a lot of reading. There is, but uh, you're an airline pilot, man. You can figure it out. It's like a fire hose in the mouth. It's a lot of information, and you got to take it in as quickly as you can get it. We'll give Randy as much assistance as we can, but he's going to have to pick up the ball and run with it himself. We've got nine other airplanes I'm worried about all over the world. Shortly after you guys are all done for the day. Done for the day. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the pressure on everything I got to learn. It's a lot, and it's a big responsibility. It's a big step up for the Dornier, too. Its latest posting was hauling passengers and cargo around Canada's north. But for its new war zone tour of duty, the Dornier got a nose to tail upgrade. UN branding, the latest in navigation systems, and a brand new coat of armor. The main gear's got clamshell doors that clip up and seal it right in. We have a Kevlar coating on the belly, so this is bulletproof basically. So we got all our markings on United Nations under this wing and on the top of the left wing. They're very specific on where they want to be. There's also a UN under the belly that hopefully means don't shoot. I wonder if that gives us much protection at all, though. I guess for those who can read uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, don't have a problem with the UN. The last part of this trip, we're going into a really unstable part of the world. There's a lot of areas that we want to avoid overflying and definitely don't want to land in. So this is your basic layout. We got our normal checklist here. All right, so where's the autopilot at? We don't have autopilot, so. There's no autopilot on this plane? So we're gonna hand fly this thing like 9,000 miles. <laughs> I didn't know that. On top of having to learn all the emergency procedures, normal procedures and everything else, now I've got to be going back, reverting back to my old flying and, and having to concentrate on just flying the airplane. I don't think I've flown a plane like this without an autopilot or flight director since 10, 15 years ago. It's just a different style of flying. This is all hands and feet, so you do get lazy. I mean, I, I flew for the airlines, and, and yeah, you, you lose your nat your hands and feet flying. And here, it's all we do. We don't have autopilots, so you know we're landing on some, you know, sometimes a 1,500 foot ice strip. So you're really flying the bus. You know the old saying: you can make you know hundreds of errors, but you just can't make any mistakes. You know, if he can't do the job, then he's not going. It's as simple as that. 
for ferry pilot Randy McGeehee, it's all or nothing. His rare shot at delivering a United Nations plane to Africa all comes down to these next few minutes. Our company 207. 207, this company, go ahead. Maxing out for training flight with Randy. All right, man, your brakes, your control. Out of the airplane. Randy's never flown a Dornier. We gotta do it. How this airplane lands and flies will be just a little different. You wanna have that finesse and good hands, but it's not always that easy. Power set. Airspeed's alive both sides. You have two good engines. To ace this test, Randy has to respond to every tilt and roll of the plane. It's all about having the perfect touch. All right, man, it's your plane. Just back around, get used to it. That's fun. That rolls quick. I'm actually not used to that. That's cool. Yeah, very responsive, isn't it? It's like a, a Ferrari. I was expecting it to be a little more stable, to be honest. This ain't no problem. The Dornier is old school flying. All hands and feet, no autopilot. Randy puts the Dornier through its paces, turns, Climbs. And some of the scarier stuff. You want to run a stall or something, or just call stall max power? Stall max power? For a sec. Climbing right out of it pretty good. Yeah, you don't need to pitch for it at all. Okay. It'll, just, it'll just power right through it. Let's go. Way overpowered this airplane. It's off. All right, sweet. Well, for no autopilot, you're doing pretty good, man. When I, <laughs> no v bar, we're talking about no flight directors. I'm like, I'm actually going to have to start flying again. Not having any issues with this thing. For all the airline pilots, though, he's terrible. He's terrible. <laughs> I was expecting him to be rusty, especially on his altitude control. And he was nailing his altitude, even in a steep turn. I'm looking, and he's got it just on the rails going around the corner. Randy's hand flying is impressive. But the most challenging part is just ahead. The Dornier was built for balance. Heavy cargo in the rear, and passenger bags in a specially designed nose. Putting that nose down gently takes a skillful hand. The nose is gonna want to drop out on you. So you gotta really catch it, okay? Don't let it just go bang. Just feel it. The nose will come down, let it just sort of drop by itself, and then just check it back hard. All right, I'll try, man. And use as much as you want so you can figure out where the wheels are. All right. Plus, plus 15, looking good. I'm looking sweet. Very nice, sir. That was outstanding, brother. Thanks, man. I was working for it, though. Yeah, I gotta say, I was working for it. Randy's earned his seat on the Dornier. But more than 8,000 kilometers south, Randy's colleague, Corey Benson, is Any, still stuck on the ground. Else, anyone else we should talk to, do you think? Corey and senior pilot Kerry McCauley have one dead battery and a runway about to close. Others scramble to beat the deadline. Corey and Carrie's chances of getting a jump start for their Beechcraft Bonanza are slipping away. Uh, I don't know, I think they're broke down too. Oh, well, maybe he's gonna pull the battery? Yeah, that, that guys, is too close. To oh, yeah. Is that what we're doing? Somehow, so despite a serious language barrier, the locals have All figured right. out the foreigners Excellent. need a boost. Oh, you're just gonna swap them? Or no? Okay, I see. They've pulled a working battery okay. to jolt the Bonanza out of its coma. Oh, man, talk about cutting it close. Jeez. Because it is 8 o'clock right now. We're off. A good co-pilot is like a relief pitcher, always ready to take over the game. Gary, with uh, this being the first time that uh, we've flown together, what do you want me doing? How do you want uh, the cockpit to get to work out? You know, I do have quite a bit more experience. I guess, you know, I'd, I'd like to be the captain, but I always work as a team. 
and Carrie needs to know what kind of a teammate Corey's gonna be. Within the first minute, we gotta get it figured out. We don't have time to get to know each other and, and time to figure out how each other flies. You really never know what another pilot's gonna be like till you fly with them. I think the guy that's gonna, you know, keep his cool, be good in an emergency. A good way to find out what your co-pilot's made of is to see how he handles an unexpected adrenaline rush, like buzzing the Amazon at treetop level. Okay, let's drop her down here a little bit and uh, do a little yeehaw. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> This is awesome. Oh man, I love this stuff. Who gets to do this? Who gets to buzz the Amazon first thing in the morning? So I think he just wanted to make sure that I'm not gonna be some wimp pilot because this is definitely not the job for, for a wimpy pilot. Ah, uh, he passed with flying colors. He was digging it. We were having a ball. A couple of kids in a candy store is what we were. <laughs> oh, this is fun. All right, let's get back to work. They got places to go. Good that you came down to help out, though. I'm so happy I'm here. This is awesome. In this tiny airborne clubhouse, Corey's passed the initiation. Far north of the equator, in Canada's Northwest Territories, Randy McGee's also made the cut. We're ready to hit the skies. I can't wait to get airborne, you know? The veteran pilot has mastered the Dornier systems, earning a place in the cockpit on a demanding United Nations flight. The pressure's on us. We gotta get the plane over there. It's a risky trip. From the far north, they'll cross the rough North Atlantic, then over continental Europe into the heart of Africa. More than 12 and a half thousand kilometers. One spare of everything. Randy's used to being called Captain, but on this flight, he'll answer to Dave Matheson. Ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do this. 7202, clear takeoff, runway 10. Clear takeoff, 10, 7202. All right, brother, you have control. Is that max power? Or, uh, max power, you're on the right. Yeah, you got two good engines. Bye, Yonin. I love this machine, man. Yeah. <laughs> this is Director Kelly, maintain nine thousand in control from the two zero. The first leg stretches nearly twenty three hundred kilometers to the remote northern community of Ikaluit. Well, we're not Kansas anymore, man. There is nothing around here but tundra and water. We're 15 miles. I've got some type of light ahead, but that could be anything right now. Got it. Yeah, sit down. It's kind of blurry. Still some clag in the way. I don't even worry about it, though. I just flies in numbers. They're putting down for the night to refuel the plane and themselves. at this time of year, huh? Warm is minus 20. To avoid a mammoth de-icing job, the plane must be towed indoors. Delivering planes is the ultimate in no-frills flying, where you're not just the pilot, you're also the ground crew. It's the pain in the ass, because it's freezing out there. You're tired from the flight. You know you have an early morning, and uh, we're having to do our own work. Joys of Arctic travel. What little sleep they get here, they'll need. In front of them is a 10,000 kilometer marathon with the finish line in a combat zone.
By the next day, sleep is a distant memory. It's been long hours of jockeying this United Nations Dornier on its trip to Africa. Man, I want to see Greenland there. If it looks cool, or at least... Yeah, if it's not clouded over, it is nice. Now at the one quarter mark, they're approaching Greenland. Yeah, once we cross these rocks, that glacier, and then it's hitting the bay there, that'd be cool. Randy sees a photo op, but after hours of butt-numbing boredom, yeah, the coming up with a hole right through the middle of it. Dave sees a slalom course. Minimums, minimums. It's just for fun. Still, skimming this ice field requires absolute precision. Here, the nimble Dornier shows what it's made of. Quick and responsive. So is Dave, who honed skills like this competing in aerobatics. The most fun I can do in an airplane really is, is aerobatics. That's a real test. You know, it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of practice, a lot of training. Dave has great hands. He can manipulate that airplane and make it do whatever he wants. I have a lot of respect for that. With the icebergs in their rear view, it's back to the business of rationing fuel for the long trip ahead. Are we there yet? <laughs> it's gonna be a long trip for you, my friend. Yeah, I think so. In the lower latitudes, above Brazil, Corey Benson is learning that the co in co-pilot is short for cooperate. Usually it's helpful that, you know, one of us is doing the navigating, so, you know, if you want to... Okay. Look, looking up frequencies and uh, stuff like that. Okay, gotcha. Generally, when we're on other ferry flights, we switch back and forth, but he definitely likes to, to be the captain. He's in the left seat, and that's the way it is. They push into the heart of Brazil, and at the end of 1,800 kilometers, the Beechcraft Bonanza is ready for a fuel up. You wanna do this one? Kerry likes to drive, but in an emergency, he might have to hand over the reins. Sure. Which is why he needs to see Corey in action. As I recall, that's the runway that you come over a hill and a, a road and a fence. And as you touch down, the whole runway is downhill. So it's kind of tough to land on. You need to have your speed under control. You don't want to be going any faster than 75, 8, the max. This is Corey's chance to show Kerry that he's more than just a passenger. Go ahead, your traffic, Bonanza, 5603 Mike. Turning left, downwind, 13, go ahead. Looks like it's a quartering tailwind from the left. A little high, dump full flaps. With a tailwind and a sloping runway, Corey needs to keep a lid on his speed. Okay, gas, three green undercarriage, make sure props pumps, you're really fast. You're 90. 95. Corey's coming in too hot and too high. Watch your speed. At this speed and altitude, he'll overshoot the runway. Okay, let's hang, hang a hard right. Kerry calls off the landing. So you're thinking it's best to come in the other way? Yeah, one? upwind's best, but we gotta be on the numbers and stuff. Okay, let's uh, get some power back though. We're doing 110 now. Here, you got it. All right, slower up. Here, we're doing 100. It's gonna be a right crosswind. Looking better this time, doing 90, but you're more on the glide path there. Corey's got the situation under control, but Carrie's still riding him. Yeah, you watch your speed. 85. 80. 75. 70. Up your nose. the last second, Kerry cuts the power and takes control of the plane. Flaps coming up. I got the brakes. I have the plane. Nicely done. You got the door. Unless it's life or death, seizing control from another pilot is bad form. Yeah, sorry about that power thing. I shouldn't have done that. That's all right. I got a little carried away. <laughs> Their speed was fine, everything was fine, and, and he went and just chopped the throttle, um, you know, 
reach over and take controls unless there's a, a danger, which there definitely wasn't a danger. I kind of screwed up his landing by cutting his power a little bit. But, you know, flying from the right seat is tough. This runway's got a big hill on it, and uh, yeah, it was no big deal. Corey may be Carrie's boss, but in the cockpit, the guy with the most experience is top dog, period. Why is the power still on? Yeah, let's, let's get out to the battery quick, so. This morning, the plane needed a jump start. Now, a reverse problem. They can't power down. Battery will drain in no time. Hot. It's like pulling the keys from your car ignition to find the radio still on. You want to hand me my knife? Carrie suspects a critical so electrical wire is somehow stuck. Oh, did that do it? Something went. Because I, I turned on the master and yeah. I turned it off, but everything's still lit up. Try it again. Everything's still lit up, huh? Well, that's not good. Beats the hell out of me. Handing over damaged goods is bad for business, especially when you're trying to break into a hot new market like Brazil. The first thing that's going to go through the new owner's mind is, is it something that our pilots or that we did? And we definitely don't want that. Mm. Ah, it's a new one on me. Yeah, I've never seen that before. There's not much time to solve this mystery. The owner wants his plane in less than 24 hours. Now, in Egypt, Randy and Dave are facing trouble of their own. Morning, dude. Super Dave. How's it going, bro? Good, man. How's your sleep? Really great, actually. How about you? I've been up since one, crunching numbers. In four days, they've come 9,700 kilometers. But it's the last 3,000 that they're really worried about. Flying over war-ravaged South Sudan. Flight planners have us take in uh, six hours and 37 minutes, and we have seven hours of fuel. 23 minutes reserve, which is not enough. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Even with a full tank, their assigned flight plan from Egypt to South Sudan leaves them barely enough gas to finish the trip. Pilots call it fuel critical. So if we get any kind of a headwind, basically we won't make it. So I've been racking my brain all night trying to figure out how to make it work. If we can get any kind of a tailwind, it'll increase it to probably about 40 to 45 minutes of fuel, which is perfect. But a headwind, we'll, we won't make it. What other options do we have? I checked in even land a cartoon. It's not an option. They said, don't bother. It takes 48 hours to get permission, and it's sketchy. <sighs> yeah, it's not my first option. We don't have any other place to go, though, huh? There's no friendly place to land between here and there. It's you know, almost 1,200 miles. And when we start up, we need an immediate taxi and also an immediate turn on course. Yep. Otherwise, they could vector us out 100 miles before they get us on course. We don't have it. So hopefully they play ball. From the moment they switch on their engines, they're eating into their already slim fuel reserve. All right, man, fuel's critical. We need to take off as soon as possible. Here we are, I'm at 202 request take position. We're ready to take off. But the guy in the control tower has other ideas. Negative. Damn it. Meanwhile, it's early morning in Brazil, and Corey Benson and Carrie McCauley are troubleshooting. Hours later, they're no further ahead. Here's the start. Make sure not to burn this battery down. Their plane is sucking power, and not even the mechanic knows why. I'm hearing the clunk, so something's working. Something's happening. But it's not happening fast enough. Right now, the only way to turn off the power to the plane is to pull the plug on the battery. It ain't perfect. Definitely unhooking the battery every time you shut the plane off is not uh, an ideal situation, but. Especially delivering it to the new owner. I and know, let's get out you know, and disconnect the battery. That's going to kill me if I got to say, it's got one little quirk. You got to disconnect the battery every time you shut the plane off. It's a safety feature, though. It's, a safety. <laughs> it's an anti theft device. Yeah. 
The plane's owner is expecting delivery in just a couple of hours. I'm going to call the owner real quick, um, just give him an update. Just going to send the owner an email. I tried to call him on his numbers and couldn't get through. I think he's a little anxious to, to get his airplane. Delivering a temperamental plane is better than no plane at all. Corey decides to push on right after a quick refuel. Huh, it turned off. The master switch, when they turned it off, all the power went off, so everything's cold, huh? Yeah. Cool. We fixed it. <laughs> you got to love it when a plan comes together. When something breaks and then it fixes itself. For me, that's the scariest part, because you never know when it's going to break again, but it is going to break again. And it's generally at the very worst place when it stops working again. This is looking really good. We got guys giving us gas. The master switch is working again. We got a beautiful day and only two hours left to go. We're golden, baby. We're not even going to be late. It's like the first time. Hey, hey Carrie, we're not in the air yet. Huh? We're not there yet. We're not there yet. That's true. We are out of here. In Egypt, Randy McGeehy and Dave Matheson are wasting fuel, desperate to get off the ground. Sierra Uniform 202 line up via Charlie. Runway 17, accept? Sure. Accept it, sir? Yeah, accept it. They're sent to the far side of the airport to await permission to take off. Another gas-guzzling delay. We're trying to take off and get out of here quick, and he's not helping us. Their flight plan leaves them only 23 minutes of reserve fuel. Every second on the ground will cost them in the air. Sierra Uniform 202. Clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, finish up 212 from Alpha Sierra November, VOR, 7202. All right, buddy, you ready, hot shot? All set, let's get going. Finally, they get clearance to take off. Sierra Uniform 202, airborne time 18. Have a nice day. Their plane, a Dornier, is a strong climber. But in the desert, the air temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. The plane's engines are having to work harder, burning through the gas. So hot, man. Our performance is we're getting killed. Worse, the guys in the control tower have assigned them a flight plan that looks more like a cow trail. Dave radios air traffic control asking for a more direct route to save on fuel. Sir, I'm at 202. Is there any chance you can approve us direct golf, Oscar, Papa, Delta, Alpha? Just because we're fuel critical on this leg, sir, and it would help us out a lot. Be nice to us, buddy. Please, uh, after contact with Sky Radar, you can uh, take this clearance, uh, zero from 202. It's bad news. Yeah, by the time we get to 110, it won't matter. We're uh, fuel critical. Air traffic control has ordered them to climb to 11,000 feet, contact another control tower, and try again. It's gonna help, man. Friggin' 100 miles in the wrong direction is not gonna help. It's 45 degrees over our track. It's nice when you're sitting on the ground, yeah. air conditioning, and you're not up here worrying about running out of fuel, you know? <laughs> 30 minutes later, they're in airspace controlled by another tower. Federal, good morning. Sierra Uniform 202-110. Request present position direct. Golf, Oscar, Papa, Delta, Alpha. Fuel critical. I can't give you permission to overfly direct to this point. All I can do with you is to proceed direct no bar. November Uniform, Bravo, Alpha, Romeo. That's straight in the frickin' line. Translation, request denied. Again. That's why he won't turn us. I mean, he probably can't even work with Sudan airspace, you know? Randy and Dave will get one last shot at shaving time off this trip, but not until the halfway point. And with just 23 minutes of spare fuel to begin with, halfway could come too late. In the skies above Brazil, 
this Beechcraft Bonanza is trouble free after some earlier power problems. It's a lot more mellow in the cockpit as well. What the hell is that? A Korg meet Hula Girl. <laughs> Hula Girl was with me on all my ferry trips when I was, uh, when I was a young lad. And uh, she's kind of <laughs> like my good luck charm, so I always bring her with on all my trips. Unfortunately, you Hula break Girl, her leg one day? Well, Hula Girl had an accident. <laughs> Pretty interesting there, buddy. Yeah, well, <laughs> we've all got our quirks. <laughs> you gotta have somebody to talk to on the long flights. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Kerry prefers flying solo, and he's been adjusting to a co-pilot who's also the boss. But after tens of thousands of kilometers with Hula Girl, Kerry's beginning to appreciate the live audience. Have you had any emergencies, Kerry? Well, yeah. <laughs> Lost an engine in a 182 hauling jumpers. Lost an engine in a queener hauling jumpers. Lost my alternator at night over the Sahara, ferry flying. Was lost over the jungle in the middle of Africa, ferry flying. Lost my ferry tank fuel pressure system in the middle of the Atlantic at night while ferry flying. Yeah, so I've had, had some emergencies. You've had a couple. Wow. You should read my book. Do you really have a book? Yeah, I'm almost done. Oh, this is gonna be like a whole new chapter now. Oh, I know, I can't decide if I'm gonna add this to it yeah, or you you having can't. a second book, you know? Oh my God. Oh, like, it's like, my life doesn't stop, I can't finish the damn book. <laughs> Just keep it. <laughs> After more than 8,700 kilometers over stormy seas and dense jungle, the Bonanza is now within sight of the new owner's ranch. All right, how's my mixture is good, gas is good. All eyes will be on them. The landing needs to be perfect. But the runway is far from it. That's definitely not a international airport runway. It's gonna be a little challenging. Yeah, remember here, Kerry, no pressure, but uh, the owner is watching you. Ah, oh good, at least I got that going for me, no pressure and all. Above the African desert, landing is the last thing Randy and Dave want to do right now. We're fuel critical on this leg to make Cuba. Is there any possibility we could get direct? They are air traffic Alpha. control as they approach Sudan. It's a war zone. Putting down here could get them kidnapped or worse. We just did one hour. We burned 656 pounds. I'll get back to that in a second. Short on gas. Randy and Dave have been asking for a more direct flight path. Twice denied, they have one last chance. Sir, no copy from Khartoum at all. Could you read it? They can't raise air traffic Alpha, control Delta, on the Alpha. radio. Awesome, we're in hostile airspace and we can't talk to anybody. After several attempts, finally they make contact. Sierra Uniform 202 radar contact, would you say again your request? And sir, from uh, Sierra Uniform 202, any chance for direct Romeo Alpha Bravo Alpha Kilo? We are fuel critical, I say again, we will be fuel critical. It is imperative we get a straighter line than this. That means go ask your boss, dipped. Come on, baby, give it to us. Negative, military area. Thanks for no help. What a dick. And he knows we're fuel critical. You know he could give it to us. And we're a United Nations flight. We're not there to bomb anybody. Out of options, they're banking on a smooth flight with no surprises. And in ferry flying, that's asking for a miracle. Above Brazil, Corey Benson knows there's a lot riding on these next few seconds. It's his first delivery into the Brazilian market, his red carpet moment. But the runway is a dirt patch roller coaster. Oh, he's got a fence stand too.
Flaps coming up. Well done, well done. Yeah. What an entrance. Look, that was a little more nerve wracking than I was anticipating. That was sporty. Excellent. Wow, this is beautiful here. Very nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Huh? This is beautiful here. Yeah, you did it. Beautiful. A good trip. <laughs> Phenomenal. Yeah. Uh -huh. Nice, huh? First time to get to see it, yeah. First time I touch it. Very good. I like the. Girl. That's not enough. That's, uh, <laughs> that's my wooler girl, eh? <laughs> you think you brought the gift for me? No, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's toast, huh? Yeah. Hey, to the new plane. To the, the new, new plane. plane. Congratulations, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. Congratulations. The delivery for, of the for, bonanza. For yeah. Cheers, Doug. This is probably the best welcome that I've ever had, delivering airplanes. These people have just been so incredibly generous and, and excited, and, um, you know, this is a passion of his. That's one of the fun parts about uh, delivering some of these smaller planes. He's going to be using this, him and his wife and his family, coming to the ranch just like what we did here. and. It was just a, a great welcome. Oh, oh we're going to be like that, <laughs> are we? <laughs> Over Africa, a run of bad luck has finally turned around for Randy McGeehy and Dave Matheson. 195, we picked up a couple knots. Not great, but I'll take it. They started this flight with just 23 minutes of fuel to spare, what pilots call fuel critical. But Mother Nature's thrown them a bone, a tailwind that lets them ease up on the throttle and use less fuel. Every knot helps. Try to squeeze 200 knots out of this thing if we can. 197. To bleed every ounce of mileage from the Dornier, Randy and Dave need to work this plane super efficiently. I mean, we look like we're trimmed out perfect, so our drag's as low profile as possible. We got up as cool as we can, gives us cool engines, less fuel flow, off our engines so that gives better range and endurance. I can't think of anything else I can do right now. We really got to start calculating that fuel. We're already losing our tailwind. Speeds dropped to 193. Damn it. That's not what we want to see. Damn it. We're down, down to 300 pounds reserve right now. But that's due to wreck. That's not with all this horse that got us going. Even with every fuel saving trick in the book, the detours ordered by air traffic control have been sucking the gas. 300 pounds of fuel left would mean we have 15 minutes. 15 minutes of spare fuel leaves them no margin for error. We've lost another three knots already since you started this fuel calculation. Everything's trending against us right now. We're losing time, we're losing airspeed, we're burning more fuel. It's not looking real good. And the view out their front windscreen is worse. Look at this, man. Get it. In Africa, storms can be sudden and fierce. Randy's about to get his first taste. We can't go around that. We're going to have to pick our way through it. The plane is too low on fuel to dodge this storm. They have to hit it head on. Bro, that's bad. That was a bad. Dude, that is lightning. Next time on Dangerous Flights. Fireworks at 11,000 feet. Dude, we're in all sorts of trouble right now, man. Randy and Dave's desert storm isn't done with them yet. <laughs> While in the far north, there's another rough ride into one of the most dangerous airports in the world. <laughs> 